this is Pukeology Podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Nemo. Labor and delivery, the most magical time where you get to meet your beautiful baby. But did anyone tell you about the most common side effect of delivery? Nausea and vomiting. So your favorite delivery doc, that's me, is here to help you to determine will you be part of the 8 in 10 women who do get sick? Plus, get tips on your body. Just listen to it. Here on Pregnancy Pugology Podcast, episode 68, will I throw up during delivery? And what is my body trying to tell me? Do you want no more morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, or how about no more headaches or migraines? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to instantly stop your worst, nausea, vomiting, or headaches now, and get 25% off using the code PUKE25. That's P-U-K-E-2-5. Or just place your Nomonausea ban in your baby registry bag on Bye Bye Baby. Or get it shipped for free in just two days as an Amazon Prime vendor, where you can find stuff for your little ones too, like No Mo Nausea Kids and No Mo Sleepless Nights Kids. And the Sleep One works for moms with small wrists too, now available at your local Walmart store. Pregnancy humor that may just make you want to pee your pants, like you don't have to pee all the time anyway, with hilarious pregnancy stories like pea soup, mucus unplugged, and yummy sauce. If you want to learn more about your pregnancy, humor and knowledge is the key to help you survive these nine months. And just know we're in this together. Today, you will learn the science behind why pregnant women throw up during delivery, what your body is trying to tell you, and natural anti-nausea remedies that you can try and work in seconds in your delivery room. Spewing all the details in today's Pregnancy Pecology podcast is our doctor, Dr. Puknomo, as we talk about why do pregnant women throw up during childbirth, our episode 68. Stay tuned. The Science of Puke, Pukeology. So why does everyone throw up during delivery? Well, you may already know that vomiting is extremely common, and it's a very common symptom during pregnancy, especially during the first three months of pregnancy, aka called morning sickness. But did you know that you can actually throw up during delivery? Ugh, I thought I was out of the woods, but you're not. So what are the different causes of vomiting during labor, and how can we prevent them when you're giving birth? That's what we're about to talk about. So the causes of vomiting during delivery. Now, if you threw up during labor and delivery, you're not alone. The fact is that most women experience nausea and vomiting when the baby is almost coming out. So while vomiting during labor is an unpleasant experience, it's perfectly normal and happens 80% of the time. So between 70 and 80% of the time, that's seven to eight of you out of 10 will have it happen, but you don't have to actually throw up. And that's the reason why we have no more nausea bands. And we'll talk about those later. However, continuously vomiting during labor can have a negative impact on you and your baby. So it can make you lose focus on pushing. It can make your labor process become super long and painful. And vomiting can also cause dehydration, making you feel weak in order to facilitate the labor and the intense workout that it really is. On the other hand, throwing up during labor may be a sign of transition, suggesting the labor process is progressing well, but it can also cause your water to break. So here are some of the reasons why you throw up during labor. Number one, you are hungry and thirsty. So you might throw up during labor if you did not get to eat a meal before you initiated the stages of labor starting. Labor is energy. It's a demanding process. It needs to have fuel in order to be able to continue on, meaning your body may be going and triggering ketosis if you don't eat before you go into labor. Now, there are eating restrictions. So if you're having a scheduled C-section, we ask you to be NPO which means nothing by mouth. And the reason why is because during your pregnancy, you actually have 
a slowed down bowel. And what that means is it doesn't beat in sync because it was trying to have all of the nutrients being stolen out of the small and the large intestine so that the baby gets more nutrients out of your food. The problem is, unfortunately, you have an increased chance of having heartburn, acid reflux, and yes, your food sits there for much longer periods of time, causing constipation. Well, if it can't go out downward, where do you think it wants to come up? upward. So again, we ask you to be NPO, which means nothing by mouth, because if you were to go into what's considered an emergency C-section and we have to put you off to sleep, we want to make sure that you don't get any food inside of your lungs. So again, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but there are eating restrictions um, that we put in place. Just remember, try to have something to eat before that you get to the hospital and then don't really eat during because you might have an anesthetic procedure. You might ask for an epidural or a spinal and we need to make sure that there is a decreased risk of you getting sick and having more upset stomach. So when your body is having an eating restriction, meaning if you didn't eat anything, it is forcing your body to convert fat to result into energy. And this will cause an increase in the amount of acid regeneration. This causes nausea. So again, your body is saying, hey, let's break down more fat. Well, in order to do so, it increases the acidity. That's also that awesome burping and gross acid reflux that a lot of us have experienced during our third trimester. But also progesterone, what a wonderful hormone. Um, So progesterone also will actually, that cardiac sphincter, which is also known as like the cap on top of your stomach, it gets really weak, okay? And so as it gets weak and stretched, it doesn't fit properly. And because it doesn't fit properly, again, the acid reflux is very common during the last stages of pregnancy. However, you must try to eat light food before you go into labor. This is because your digestive system will stop. Well, I don't say stop entirely, but it decreases. Okay, think of the fight or flight reflex. The fight or flight is the same thing as saying when your body has endorphins or adrenaline, if you're getting chased by a lion or a tiger, right, you're running and you're not really thinking about eating, So again, what happens is your digestive system stops in order to be able to give all of the energy and your muscles the ability to be able to run really fast. Well, this is the same thing because you're going through a marathon. You are running a marathon with your body and that's called birth. So when you're giving birth, your stomach or the food contents actually can trigger vomiting because it's just trying to get anything out of there. It doesn't want to have to focus in on the stomach while we are trying to push the baby out. Another thing is when you are pushing a baby out, you're pushing a watermelon out of a donut. Oh yes, ladies, you will understand my analogy when you're in that beautiful birthing suite. And if they ask you for a mirror, Some of you might say, absolutely not. But if you did get an epidural, it will help you to be able to push appropriately to make sure that you can see the muscles that you're actually working as you're pushing out. I'm digressing. But going back to triggering vomiting, um, when you're pushing a huge baby out of your hoo-hoo, what's happening is you are doing what's called a vasovagal. And a vasovagal response is like that grunting, like, okay? What happens is you're... Your vagus nerve is the largest nerve that is attached to many different parts of your body, uh, many different organ systems, I should say. So the vagus nerve, it affects your heart, it affects your stomach. And what happens is when you grunt, okay, and you're holding your breath and you're literally pushing something very large out, it decreases your heart rate. And at the same time, it's a natural reflex to be able to get sick or to, to throw up. That's the reason why if you've ever been poked in the eye, oh my gosh, it hurts really bad, right? But your natural reflex is your heart rate drops and you get very sick and almost throw up. So eating foods like peanut butter, like we talked about like light foods, but the things that will actually stay, uh, eating foods such as peanut butter and juices can help Um, you make sure that you do not throw up during your actual labor experiences. So the reason why is because it like sticks to the walls. Um, And and also it makes sure that it still gives you enough of the juice. The juice is the calories. It has the actual sugar, which is called fructose, to keep you going uh, longer and longer in that marathon of birth. Number two, inadequate fluid intake. So having dehydration when giving birth can actually trigger nausea. It can lead to dehydration. So we always say make sure that you're eating ice chips. Um, Again, when you're drinking water, it's in smaller sips instead of like 
a big gulp. Okay. Make sure that you are getting adequate fluid. That's the reason why we put in IVs inside of the hospital to make sure that women are adequately hydrated. Now we're going to also get into for hydration status. This is the number one cause, um, or, This is our solution to decreasing blood pressure. So decreased blood pressure is caused whenever you are about to get a spinal or an epidural. So a spinal and epidural, they're both going to be uh, performed by someone like myself uh, who practices anesthesia. And so what happens is when we go and we place a a large amount of medication inside of the area of your back in between your your different uh, vertebrae, when we're doing that, we're actually causing a vasodilatation or a dilation of all of your vessels lower. So imagine all of a sudden your vessels turn in from like a kiddie pool to Olympic size swimming pool and whoom, okay, all the blood rushes down. When that happens, if you're dehydrated, your blood pressure is going to fall significantly. And that's not what we want because low blood pressure, you will immediately start vomiting. So the best way to to contradict the two things is we give you hydration. So we usually give you about 500 mLs to a liter of fluids before we go and place the epidural or the spinal. And then upon doing that, we actually will place the nomonagia band. They have nomonagia med plus bands on the actual patients before this happens so that if just in case they start to feel a little dizzy um, because all of that blood has kind of rushed down and you, a headache is sometimes, um, possible, you always have that um, aromatic or that aromatherapy of the peppermint oil that's actually inside the band to help you. So those, that dehydration and that inadequate fluid status can happen whether you're having a regular vaginal birth, whether you're actually going to be um, medicated with a spinal or epidural, and or on the third aspect, um, if, if in fact you are dehydrated when you're placing those different lines. Okay, medication. Now, during labor, you may take pain relieving medications and drugs to reduce the actual pain and contractions. So that's separate from the actual epidural. Um, one of the most common side effects of these medications is throwing up because you're taking a pain medication. Pain medications' number one side effect are Number one, itching. Number two, vomiting. So those two things happen because it also decreases your bowel movement. That's the reason why you have chronic constipation with people who are taking pain medications for long periods of time, okay? Medications um, that are also inside of the epidural may reduce and suddenly reduce your blood pressure, which we talked about. This causes an instant natural body's response of nausea and vomiting. In addition, pain that you're experiencing, pain, 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 do not underestimate it. Pain can cause labor and vomiting during the laboring process. All right, number four, throwing up during a C-section. So during a C-section, a woman is normally given a spinal, which is an anesthetic agent to relieve the pain and relax the muscles. And basically you are, you can't, feel or you can't feel pain receptors from the area of the medication is placed on down. Okay. So again, most of the time, completely numb all the way through to your feet. So it's usually at the tip of the xiphoid, which is kind of like underneath your breastbone. And then you're numb from there all the way down. Now you will feel touch and you'll feel a difference in temperature And you will feel pressure, but no pain. I know it sounds crazy. It literally feels like little minions are working on you. Um, I say that out of experience. I myself had one vaginal delivery and I had one cesarean section. So the C-section, it was like minions were working on top of you. And then during the actual, like when the baby's coming out and they're taking the baby out, you will feel this intense pressure as someone is literally pushing the baby down. Uh, It's the craziest feeling ever, but I do want to talk about it real quick. So when they do give you the spinal, they give you the spinal, then they ask you to lay down. Again, you have to make sure that you're well hydrated so that you don't get sick. But one of the most common anesthetic methods, like we talked about of doing the spinal anesthetic will cause that intense like decrease in your blood pressure, which can show vomiting. Another thing is too, because of the fact that naturally you have a decreased motility of your bowels or movement of your bowels, 
a lot of pregnant women throw up. It's just something that happens, especially during that high pressure time period. That just means that baby is coming very, very soon. If you start to feel where you're feeling queasy, just literally take that band, the no nausea band and smell it during delivery. I'm telling you what, it will literally save your undergarments from getting super grossed out. And if you're having a C-section and your husband's next to you, no offense, he doesn't really want to hold your bile. <laughs> Growing up on a Tuesday? One puke story. Ah, ah, ah. Well, we were waiting for the perfect way to tell our parents that we were pregnant. So we decided to tell them over lunch and have everyone open their photo card. We sent it as a Christmas card after the soup and before the salad. So the soup of the day was pea green soup. And the second I looked at it, it started dry heaving. And then, of course, I threw up behind my chair. My dad yells out, congrats, you're pregnant. It ruined the whole surprise, but made everyone laugh. Thanks, Michelle, with two ones instead of the L's for that. That hilarious puke story. I was in my last trimester of my first pregnancy and everyone talked about how a mucus plug was, but I never thought about what it actually looked like until it literally dropped out of me. I was so grossed out that I started throwing up uncontrollably and told my husband I was peeing on myself to get a towel. He said, either way, we have a toilet leak or your water just broke. Baby boy was born soon after that disgusting mucus plug. Japanese steakhouses are wonderful, especially the delicious yummy yummy sauce, which sends me running to the toilet after dinner. It stank so bad it made me sick. What I didn't know is that I had leftover up chuck on my shirt Ew, that my belly caught. So my husband said, babe, I didn't know that you're still getting morning sickness. I then had to confess to him that the yummy yummy sauce wasn't so yummy coming back up. Now, do you have a hilarious puke story that you just can't wait to share it with me? Send it to me, pukeology, P U K E O L O G Y, at nomonaja.com, or tweet us at pukeology so we can all have a good laugh. <laughs> Tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. Now, everyone talks about awesome remedies for morning sickness, but do we really talk about remedies for your labor and delivery room? Well, we should because it's a part of it. Over 75% of women do get sick during labor and delivery. It's okay. You're not alone. And we already found out why you are having nausea and vomiting. Now let's talk about ways to help you to decrease the risk. Staying hydrated with lots of fluids. So you must make sure that you drink an adequate amount of fluids to stay hydrated during your laboring process. The recommended intake is a minimum of eight ounces of water hourly during labor. Alternatively, you can chew ice chips. That's usually um, nurses' absolute favorite is they give you ice chips if you're anything like myself. I'm also anemic. Um, I chew ice all the time. So if you are anemic like myself, you will love chewing the ice chips. It will give you like the sense of good feeling and it kind of gives you something to think about as well especially during those contractions now staying hydrated during labor not only prevents vomiting but also reduces fatigue it makes the labor process faster have you do you kind of want to know more about labor itself have you ever had a baby if you haven't please go and take a listen. We have multiple different um, what to expect and when to call. I think that's probably the most important part about labor and delivery is really understanding when you should call your doctor. Okay, that's an episode 41. So go take a listen to that one. And also episode 39, labor and delivery and what to expect. This is the how to, the what to expect, the what you need to make sure that you've packed, all about labor and delivery right here on Pregnancy Pecology Podcast. Trust me, there's something for everyone when whatever type of stage of pregnancy that you're in. 
eating a light meal before labor. So make sure that you are eating a light meal or light food before you go into labor. Okay. Don't try to go for the full on Japanese steakhouse. It's not that good of an idea, especially if you are being induced, go with something that's light, go with something that's a high um, protein. Okay. All of those that helps you to prevent ketosis, which can lead to vomiting. In addition, eating prevents your body from converting fats into energy, which reduces the acid generation again which triggers vomiting. Remember to avoid eating when you're already in labor because your digestion really slows down and stops. So don't go pull into McDonald's um, as you are like nine centimeters. It's, that's not the idea. Make sure that you have some little snack, something on your stomach before that you get to the hospital. So you can also help to decrease that with having like things that are natural, right? Like natural anti-nausea remedies, little things like drinking teas or soups or something that has a ginger tincture will help to kind of calm the stomach. And also no more nausea bands. I know we keep talking about them, but they're actually essential oil infused acupressure wristbands that are used in hundreds of labor and delivery streets across the country. And they're actually used in 12 different countries of the world to help pregnant women, just like you not get sick during delivery. They stop 80% of nausea or vomiting in seconds. And all you have to do is just place them on the P6 point of your wrist and then smell when you're not feeling good. So place them on your registry at Bye Bye Baby or better yet, just buy one on Amazon and put it into your hospital bag just in case your hospital doesn't actually carry them. It's a $12 purchase that could keep your hospital gown smelling super nice. Now, if it goes past the first line of defense, you can ask your anesthesia provider for medications, okay? If you are continuously throwing up and then there afterwards, make sure that you consult your doctor and you'll talk about different antiemetics or anti-nausea medication that you can take that will help you do multiple different entities. If you take a medication called Reglan, that'll help to push the food down. Um, You can also ask for Zofran, something that decreases the actual urge um, to get sick. And then there's many others, but those are the two that we um, mainly use. Uh, Phenergren sometimes, but usually after the baby is out. So bottom line, you have to remember that it is normal, unfortunately, to get the feelings of nausea and vomiting, but no mo. You don't have to actually go through your entire laboring process, vomiting the entire way. Instead, you can try the natural anti-nausea remedies that we talked about from no monogaban to ginger and things of that nature. Remember, throwing up may be a sign of your transitioning labor. So going from a passive to an active labor, and that means that your labor is progressing well. Mm -hmm. However, while throwing up during labor can be completely unpleasant, It can lead to dehydration, so make sure that you contact your doctor if you're experiencing or throwing up during labor where it just gets way too much. Now that you know the science behind why do pregnant women throw up and what is their body trying to tell them, plus natural anti-nausea remedies that will help you to have a birthday that you've always dreamed of. I hope I was able to give you all of the most incredible answers, the best that there is to date here on Pregnancy Pugology Podcast. And if you love me and if you love what I'm saying, give me five star hearts for ratings or likes. And don't forget to download this episode, but more importantly, share it with all your Prego friends. Thanks again for listening to Pregnancy Pugology Podcast, episode 68, Why Do I Throw Up During Delivery? Happy birthday! Pugology Podcast, edutainment at its finest.